Casey and I just got back from Minnesota after going to see Snake Discovery for the 2002 enclosure build off. Three, two, one, go! Go, go, go! Stay tuned for next week's videos from all the channels that were involved in that, including ours. And, well, we came home to a little bit of a beautiful mess. It's hatching season, and there are so many babies already out of their eggs, as well as coming out of their eggs right now, like this little hermit's tortoise right here. Usually, we are the very first things that they get to see when they come out of the egg. I've been present for the birth of every little creature on this island. But we were away this time. This little one gets to stay in its little incubator box right now because it's not fully out of the egg, but some of its siblings are. So the point is to get them out so that they don't disturb eggs that are not yet ready to hatch and start putting them into little rearing units. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to go through hundreds of baby turtles and tortoises and you guys get to see them on their very first moments of life. Now, we've got a lot to go through, but we're gonna start with our Mediterranean tortoises, or at least some of them. We've got all three types of Hermit's tortoises here, Western, Eastern, and Dalmatian, and we even have some marginated tortoises just starting to hatch, or pip. Pip is when they just start to break out of that egg with the egg tooth on the tip of the beak there. Um, we don't have any Greek tortoises hatching yet, but um, they're right behind them, so we need to carefully and quickly get the eggs that have hatched uh, taken care of and get the babies out so that we can put the eggs that are not yet ready back in the incubator. The first thing to do is to make sure they're ready to come out and then we put them in little shallow containers to get that vermiculite off. Vermiculite is the medium that we use to incubate the eggs in. It's the most commonly used thing for a reptile incubation. And we make sure that they get a drink too. So we're going to start here with uh, some little Dalmatian herbins. You can see here, got a lot of vermiculite on them, but he's straightened out and ready to go. And what I mean by straightened out is they're actually folded in half once they're in the egg. They're also born with a yolk sac, which is right there, but they absorb it quickly. And once it's absorbed, that means it's time to come out. So I have three Dalmatians fully out and they're soaking right now, but you can see right here, these two little ones, they're just starting to come out of the egg. One really only has its head out while the other has like kind of a foot and part of its snout out. Got to let them do it on their own. You never want to force them out of the egg, but you got to keep tabs because they can start rolling these other eggs. And even though the babies are fully formed and a lot stronger than they were when they first started developing, that can still harm them if they're not ready to hatch. Okay, so next up, we've got two different localities of Western Hermit's tortoise. We've got some from the mainland of Italy, and we've got some from the south of France right here. And we're just gonna do the same thing. They're all fully hatched and ready to come out, and we're gonna put them in here with the Dalmatians and let them get their first drinks, and of course, get a little bit of that vermiculite off them. And it's so cool, they just start drinking right away. It's awesome. You'd be thirsty too if you just went through all that, trying to break out of an eggshell after being in it for two months. So now we just gotta grab these couple of baby marginated tortoises out that are ready. We can move on to turtles. One's already really trying to burrow. Look at that. They're just so perfect. What's amazing about marginateds is, you know, a lot of baby turtles are, or tortoises are basically mini versions of their parents. Marginateds look totally different. They're almost white or a cream color with just some dark areas around the scoots. Um, and then when they get to be full blown adults, they're those really awesome, elongated, uh, skirted, black colored adults. marginated here. What's going on with it though? Okay, so this one is actually not ready to come out yet. I'm going to give you a quick sneak peek. This one still is basically folded and it has a lot of its yolk sac. So it's best that it just kind of hangs out in there or at least goes into a smaller container 
where it can finish hatching out before you want to place it in water because, you know, if it can't really move itself correctly because its body's not straightened out, it could drown even in just a little bit of water. So we'll give that one like another 24 hours or so before we give it a soak. So as far as tortoises go, who is going to hatch today and be ready to come out is now out as well as a few that hatched before we left. Now, please keep in mind, this is not how you house baby tortoises. These are simple, quick rearing units and really they're not actually rearing units because they're not going to spend much more time in here. This is for them to make sure they're fully absorbed with that yolk sac, they're straightened out, they've had their drinks, we soaked them a bunch of times within the first week or so and they just kind of just spend that first week, maybe 10 days in these smaller bins and then we move them into those actual rearing units which you've seen in other videos. We've done both indoor and outdoor videos on on how to properly raise baby tortoises and of course we'll update those down the line too but I just want to make that clear that this is strictly very temporary just to get these babies out into something where we can health inspect them and make sure that they are good to go to start taking their first meals so just real quick for some comparison, these are babies that are about a week old now and you can already see that they are completely straightened out. They're even starting to show as if they've got a little bit of a growth line in the scoots and that's because they have fully absorbed that yolk sac that feeds them. So we've got a little Western Hermans tortoise right here. This is a Dalmatian Hermans tortoise there and this is the of course very popular Eastern Hermans right there. These babies are ready to start eating and they're going to get moved into actual rearing units. To more species, now we've got North American wood turtles and Blanding's turtles, and I also wanted to show you guys that for the first time ever, we hatched a couple Eastern milk snakes. These little guys and girls hatched about, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago now, and they've gone through their first sheds and they've actually started eating. So they're gonna get set up into bigger things now as well. But we have a lot of work to do here with these turtles. We've got a whole bunch of wood turtles that are completely caked in vermiculite. We gotta get them rinsed off and into these little holding units. And just like the tortoises, this is extremely temporary just to get some health assessments, see how they've straightened out, make sure everybody is okay and not deformed, and then we will move them into bigger rearing units. So uh, here we go. So just taking all of these little baby wood turtles just letting them get their first swim, their first drink. Oh, you're gonna lose one. Whoa, I'm losing one. <laughs> Let them get all this vermiculite off them. The sex of them is determined by chromosomes, much like ours. So they're not temperature sex dependent like most other turtle and tortoise species. And what that means is the sex of the turtle is influenced by the temperature it's incubated at. There's a lot of fluctuation and differences there, but generally speaking, warmer temperatures are going to produce females. Cooler temperatures are going to produce males, but in the case of the greater North American wood turtle, that doesn't matter. So we incubate them at lower temperatures overall, just so that we make sure we don't mess them up inside the egg by getting uh, anomalies or deformities that can harm them and where they won't be able to live a normal life. So I think that's all of them. And there are still, well, just a couple eggs left to hatch. Yeah, it looks like, it looks like we're almost done with wood turtles for the year. There's only one, two, three, four, four eggs left to hatch. All this is just discarded eggshell. And you'll notice that the eggshells are leathery. Unlike the tortoise eggs that we just went through, which are brittle like a chicken egg.
All right, on to a couple Blandings turtles here. We've already got 15 out, and now we've got three more, I think, here that are ready to get washed off. What's really cool about baby Blandings turtles is they already have really long necks and that bright yellow chin that they are so well known for. The shell's gonna get more intricate as they grow, and of course, they will also develop the hinge on the plaster. We actually had six more ready to go, it wasn't three. So we're gonna put them in this, and then we are going to round everybody up and bring them back to the incubation room where they can stay warm and get ready for those rearing units. But we're not done yet. We've got at least more than 100 turtles to show you. <laughs> All right, so we are inside because we have some hatchling terrapins to sort through and get hydrated and get ready for release. Um, for those of you who don't know, Chris and I have a project called the Terrapin Conservation Initiative. We have a couple videos out on our channel for you guys to check out to see what that's all about. Um, but basically, we rescue nests, we artificially incubate them, and then when the time is right, we release them back into the marsh where we found them. So today we have, I don't know, Chris seems to think there's maybe over 100 in here that we need to go through. Definitely. We'll put them into some fresh water. We'll make sure those yolk sacs get absorbed and they're all completely ready for release. And then we'll take them over to the marsh, maybe in like five to seven days and wish them the best. So let's start sorting. Wow, look how pretty. And now, the reason, the reason that we're inside is because we don't mix the wild turtles with the turtles from our private collection. Um, that's just biosecurity to the fullest extent there. So these turtles are taken care of in here before release, and our stuff obviously is what you see in all the videos. Yeah. We also have several different locations um, to rescue these nests and, and check out the females. So that's why we have two separate um, bins here because we like to release exactly where they came from. about 132 terrapins that came out of their eggs today, which is super exciting. And they look beautiful. Yeah. They look ready to go. Um, um, I'm just kind of standing here marveling at them. <laughs> they no two are the same. No, they're incredible. They're incredible. We got some concentric rings. We've got some patternless. And then we have these terrapins that have these very fine lines on each scoop. Just incredible every year. I, it'll never get old. Yeah, and you know, just like all the other species that we've shown you in this video, everything intensifies with age. So all these species, like none of them, are really even showing their true colors yet. And just as they get bigger and older, it just gets mind blowing how incredible they look. They're true masterpieces. So all total, between everything we showed you hatching out in our nature room and all of these little terrapins, that's 219 babies just today and when I was upstairs before pulling those other babies out I noticed that some of our Florida box turtles are starting to pip out of their eggs so this is just going to be an avalanche as the end of the season comes along and these baby terrapins we will start preparing to get released that's the best part about it is that these ones do get to go back to the wild to repopulate their population the Garden State tortoise babies are going to go into rearing units like I said earlier and those are just simplistic enclosures with plenty of room, proper lighting and substrate so the babies can start growing out. That's what Jabari, our little first ever known USA hatched Bell's Hingeback is in. Um, she's doing well, by the way, we say she because that's what we think. Yeah, she seems to have quite a personality on her. She has like her own little niches of where she likes to go. Uh -huh. uh, she is so much fun to watch. Yeah. I love checking on her. So, you know, simple things like humidity, cover, the lighting, the proper uh, hydration and diet is what's going to allow all those babies to start growing up and uh, getting stronger by the day. So, stick around, stay tuned, because this is just the beginning of hatching season here at Garden State Tours.